What's up guys, Hyatt here and I want to announce that we are starting into game hacking series just with this video. So this will be the first video, we won't do anything special in this video so far because before we can get started with game hacking we have to know what we are doing, right? So I'm not an expert at this but I understand the process of what we are doing and I think so if you think like me or maybe well yeah if you think like me then maybe this will help you understand the process of what we are doing or what we are looking at so for this we'll be using offsets from the internet and we'll be making hacks for the game Counter-Strike Global Offensive so I hope nobody is offended by when we are doing this I can tell you that if you're doing it just like this way it's something that Wolf Anti Cheat uh, knows, and you'll get banned for that. So you have to find your own ways to, yeah, not be detected. But I won't show this in the video. I'll be just showing how to make, for example, a trigger bot or something like that, or glow wall hack, uh, etc., bunny hop, all the common stuff you know. So yeah, let's start into what we're looking at when we open a game's process. So for this, I'm gonna be running global offensive and make sure you run it in insecure modus I'll show you how to run it in insecure modus so you type minus insecure this is very important because if you don't okay I started in full screen you might be not seeing anything so I'm gonna be putting it to window mode in just a sec once it's loaded so why insecure because when you're experimenting you can uh, get a vac from a private lobby even that so this is very dangerous you should watch out for that I'm gonna make a small window just so you can see maybe even smaller maybe here this okay there we go this is this is a cute little window okay so what insecure is very very important if you don't want to get vacked and why you can also get vacked is because you make mistakes and you change or track v wrong values which are there uh, to easier detect you so for example aimbot make mistakes and they take wrong values and then you get untrusted forever something like that so yeah let's get started with what you need so you will need cheat engine to understand the process and check if everything is alright because yeah you can view up the memory is there and see if the values are what you're looking at or what you're looking for next you need something that's called VA memory a link is down in the description if I forget to edit just tell me I'll edit it's a DLL which uh, it's uh, from the company Vivid Abstractions I just see that uh, it's a DLL which helps us working with memories and working with the process so it really speeds up the process of programming a, a cheat, a hack. So yeah, it's very useful. But you can also do it without it. But in the tutorials I'm going to be making, I'll use it. Because it's really, really fast and easy. And very convenient. So to show you the process, or show you what's going on in, in the game, I'm going to open a private lobby really quick with harmless bots. So remember, insecure modus is uh, mode is very important. So yeah, just once it loads, uh, I'll show what I was talking about. Du -du 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 -du. Takes a while. <coughs> Come on, load. It will be laggy because I'm recording with Camtasia and it's for desktop recording, not for games. I could be using Fraps, but it takes up a lot of space. So I'm gonna join the CT right here. SV cheats and get a gun okay so first okay so how I'm going to explain this is like this so everything you see here the time the team size the health the money everything that is stored in the process or yeah it's stored in the memory which is used by the process so we can look into that we can use the information so 
you can see the enemies right there so now you don't see them but they're still in the game and the game knows where they are because once I step aside here oh there they are okay so they're always there okay no they're not always there so Wolf try to uh, make an anti-cheat system or yeah algorithm so they disappear at a yeah at a special dis distance so once I'm like here maybe they're gone I don't know if we put air draw the models draw other models too we can see through walls right but if I see that see that there there's the guy now he's gone so this means we can't see them from here but we can see them from here all right so it doesn't work for example if we're making glow we don't know f uh, for sure and even if we see them from here because they're rendered right if i'm looking at them okay now it shows now it doesn't show that it's an enemy that's why a trigger bot from here over there wouldn't work so if i go snipe like this Okay, now it works, but the double doors at dust too, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, it doesn't work, right? Because the the game doesn't show us that that's an enemy, and therefore the trigger bot doesn't know either. However, the bullets, they still go there, that's why you can kill them. Okay, so yeah, look in, let's look into the game. So you can see my health right here, and I'm going to attach the process in teach, teach engine, yes, this is a teach engine. Okay, open process... And there we go so I can search for values and you can see my life is 100 so I'm going to make the first scan and the value type is 4 bytes it's one on the one side I know that it's 4 bytes on the other side most of these are 4 bytes some of them are float so you can search for all yeah you can search for any so we're gonna make a few more scans so they disappear but what can, what I can do now to detect it and there is no possibility to hack health, yes, unless you're the host, like on Modern Warfare 2 or something. I'm going to type hurt me 10, and now I have 95. So I'm going to search for 95. Next, can see we only got 21, we were at 33,000. Now I can repeat the process, and I'm going to be at 90. Next, can. So we can see we found our health and we could change it. If I get one of these, one of them will change it. I don't know, 50, does it work? Okay, this one doesn't work. So one of those would be working. I think it's this one, I'm not sure. I don't remember how far they're away. But don't worry about finding the right address because this is very old, right? It, it's not... So yeah, we change it, but it's still the same, therefore we know it's not that one. This is an... yeah, see that? See that? Uh, watch closely again, or I'm going to fix this. 50. See, it's it's going 50, 50, 50, 50, 90, 50, 90. So it's probably the indicator right here, and because they have a thread which syncs it, um, it's going to change. So don't worry about finding processes, this is old school. Uh, we'll get them... you can get them on the internet. Uh, I will be having them already, and I I tell you, I didn't search for them like this. I did something easy, I just googled for them, right? Because that is possible these days. Back in the days, you had to find them themselves, and that's what really was really frustrating to me, because I couldn't find the right uh, addresses. The, look, these are dynamic, right? These are dynamic addresses, they are black right here, but it's not always the indicator, so once I close the game, they will be invalid and I'll have to search again. That's why we can't use just these. Also the fact that they're not changing it. Uh, we don't know which one is the right one because we have a few because that takes time. So they're always, they're also programs which search for the right, uh, which search for the right address. Because they know the pattern, because the pattern is always the same unless there's a big update which changes the pattern add something new I don't know or remove something so therefore we right now know that these programs will fight the right address and there are people who post them on the internet that's why we can find them without even scanning so yeah this was the this uh, the, this was this if that makes sense to you I hope it does 
but maybe it makes sense once we look at the static addresses. So on the top here we can see a few static addresses from the internet and I'm going to delete all these because we don't need them because they're, they're crap. And I'm going to set new scan so it disappears. Okay, so we want to add a matter add an address manually. But first, before we do anything here, the game, imagine the game to be like a book. So the book is the game. The modules and we'll come to that in a second. So CS:GO is an XE process. It uses modules which are libraries, so DLLs. The modules are like chapters and each chapter has like, don't think of it like a novel, but think of it like a programming book. It has chapters, but it also has, like, smaller headings which describe something special. So, the module is the chapter, and what's inside the chapter, each uh, point, each, yeah, bullet point, say, each heading, is basically, here, local player, okay? We'll take a look at that, and you'll understand what I mean. So first add a pointer because these are pointers. If you know how C++ works and if you don't, you should be knowing that because then we you will understand why they're using uh why they have pointers like that. Why is it all so complicated? Why not just straight away the address? Why do we have to point at something which points at something which points at something? So 